Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome into K-Win today. It is now 8 minutes after the hour of 9 o'clock around the Tri-State area, both on radio at News Radio 101.3 and 1420 AM. KWN 101.3 FM 1420 and, of course, KWN TV on uh, several uh, great uh, cable systems and, of course, streaming all the time at ITV Chattanooga, your Roku, Firestick, Ample, uh, Android TV, Smart TVs, and more. ITV Chattanooga. And uh, eight minutes after the hour, we start our uh, morning off every day looking at area death notices. Brought to you by more funeral homes where they have chapels both on Sand Mountain in Trenton. They've been serving our family now for generations. For over 70 years, more Funeral Home dedicated to those that we serve. We we'll begin our coverage this morning as we uh, look at it out of DeKalb County where Charles, uh, excuse me, George Combs of Sand Mountain has passed away. The uh, funeral services are set for this coming Thursday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the Cornerstone Funeral Chapel in Eider. Family receiving friends on uh, Wednesday evening from 4 until 8 and from 10 a.m. until the time of the service on Thursday. Lucinda Gale Cindy Davis of Sand Mountain has passed away at her request. There are no services planned. Cornerstone is also handling those arrangements. Nellie Shankles has passed away. The funeral services will be coming up on Wednesday, August the 12th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the Rainsville Funeral Home. Mr. Curtis Ray Frost, Jr. has passed away. Services will be coming up with the memorial service this evening at 6 o'clock. Family receiving friends from 4 to 6 prior to the service this afternoon at the W.T. Wilson Funeral Chapel. Out of Jackson County, Mary Lucille Prince Kane. Services are set for this coming uh, Tuesday. That is today at 5 o'clock. At the uh, Prince Cemetery, there will be graveside. Scottsboro Funeral Home is in charge. Daryl Jean Sites has passed away. Funeral services, 2 o'clock today at the Scottsboro Funeral Home. Family receiving friends on up until the time of the service. Judy Hastings has passed away. Family will have a... Um, uh, will receive friends rather today at Rudder Funeral Home Scottsboro Chapel from 5 until 8. There, is, uh, there will be a graveside service held Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. at the Cedar Hill Cemetery. Emma DeHart Nutting has passed away. The uh, information uh, for the funeral service will be uh, graveside today at 2 o'clock at the Flat Rock Lewis Cemetery. Lewis Cemetery in Flat Rock, graveside service at 2 o'clock. This afternoon, Rudder Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Samuel Austin Wildman has passed away. Celebration of Life is scheduled for September the 4th at uh, the uh, Shell Mount Campground in Jasper, Tennessee. Out of Marion County, also a James Tom Stevenson has passed away. Graveside services will be coming up at 10 a.m. this morning at the Mount Olive Cemetery. Whitwell Memorial Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Robert Charles Murphy has passed away. Family will have a private memorial service later. Neil O'Daniel Sr. has passed away. Graveside service held today. It will be 11 a.m. at the Squatchy Valley Memorial Gardens. Rogers Funeral Home of Jasper in charge of the arrangements. Donald L. Ralston has passed away. Arrangements have been entrusted by the Reed Funeral Home. They uh, will be coming up today at 11 a.m. at the uh, graveside of the Pine Grove Cemetery. Buddy Gray has passed away. Services will be coming up uh, today. Uh, the uh, uh, Reed Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Alice Marie Gardner, or Gunner, excuse me, Alice Marie Gunner. Arrangements by the Reed Funeral Home in Whitwell. Services, a memorial service, will be coming up August the 16th, 2 o'clock, at the Pikeville Cumberland Presbyterian Church. And out of Dade County, Sandra Gale Davies has passed away. Services, graveside, will be held later on this morning at 11 a.m. at the Hooker Cemetery. That'll be graveside services at 11 a.m. this morning at the Hooker Cemetery in Wildwood for Sandra Gale Davis. 
That's a look at area death notices brought to you by More Funeral Homes, dedicated to those that we serve. Well, good morning, everyone. It is now 21 after the hour. Back to uh, K Wayne today, and as promised yesterday, we have Dade County School Superintendent Dr. Jan Harris. She's in the studio with us this morning, and we'll be here all uh, all this uh, uh, both these live segments. We will not be taking phone calls for those of you who are calling in. We're not going to be opening up the phones because it's very important that we go. Uh, we're just two days away from getting students back in Dade County schools, and wanted to talk with uh, Dr. Harris uh, in depth with uh, the uh, opening plans and some of the news that's already been generated by the uh, by the school system and the teachers going back. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Evan. How are you? Uh, very well this morning. Thank mm -hmm. you. And, and thank you so much for coming in and being a part of the program. I will tell the audience that you have been more than, uh, than helpful every time that we've asked questions or uh, asked you to come in and, and share information. You have, uh, you have been uh, ready to, uh, to give us the information every time, and we thank you for that. I'm glad to do it. Uh, well, let's start before we before we talk about the opening of schools. Let's go back here about a week or so, as uh, uh, the board decided to uh, to delay the opening of schools from August seventh to August the thirteenth. Uh, uh, teachers already back. Uh, we've had two um, um, releases, if you will, uh, to the parents that first two teachers had had uh, or two employees rather had, had tested positive for the COVID and then yesterday you letting everyone know that we've had one athlete and another employee testing uh, positive for a total of uh, four. So kind of mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about what we're doing as of mm -hmm. this point and then we'll start talking about uh, what's going to go forward. We have a lot to cover. Yes. Well that's why I've got my apron on this morning. <laughs> And my husband bought me a new mug. I'm a collector of mugs. And I drank coffee this morning out of my mug that says, don't use that teacher voice on me. You ever have your wife use the teacher voice, Evan? Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and confess <laughs> up. Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> anyway, we, we've got our boots and spurs on over in Dade County Schools. We are sweeping and cleaning and organizing. And you know, that's what teachers are really good at, getting ready for the new school year. And delaying uh, just a few days has made a world of difference. Uh, in my weekly newsletter that I sent out last night, there's a great video, Evan. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, they say, and um, Mr. Farney, created a video of what the high school looks like now in preparation for COVID-19. And we have that. Mm -hmm. We're going to show. Oh, you good. want to show it now while you're talking about sure, it? Sure, sure. There's right. no uh, music or right. so you voice just, uh, with it. So I'm I just going to show it and, okay. uh, and then you can mm -hmm. continue uh, uh, continue talking about it. Okay, I, I can't see And we see apologize it, so. for those of you on radio uh, <laughs> that uh, you'll just have to go along with uh, uh -huh. Dr. Harris's uh, description here. Well, um, I, I can't see it in front of me on the uh, side. If you'll turn it around just a little bit, you can see it on the screen right above there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, so what you're looking at is uh, partitions uh, protecting students from each other as they speak and as they breathe. Um, we have um, Mr. Farney and the career tech teachers have created more physical barriers. There's a picture of the backpack foggers for rapid disinfecting. Digital thermometers for routine fever checks. We're going to be checking temperatures. Um, we strongly encourage masks. Mr. Farney's modeling a mask. Teachers are going to wear a face shield and a mask. And um, we'll have outside ventilation when possible. There's a picture. Um, there's the uh, coral room showing the HEPA air filtration for band and coral. We've added a nurse. Every school has its own nurse. And then, of course, we want to remind everyone of the CDC guidelines. Wash your hands, social distance. Um, 
and wear a mask. So those are very, very important. So, um, if Very good video, by the way. Th oh, well, I would say thank you, but I didn't create it. <laughs> Mr. Farney created it. He's um, very tech savvy, as we all know. And um, anyway, um, if you want to see that and you're at home or you're in your car, you can go to our website at dadecs.org and click on um, administration on the, the bar across and then go to Dr. Harris, superintendent, and then the newsletter. And it's my newsletter dated August the 10th, and I have a link to that video. And it's also on the Dade County High School Facebook page, so you can find it. And I think the parent page reposted it as well. And I, I got to read just mm -hmm. the... Uh the front page, if you will, of your newsletter last night, and with mm -hmm. the uh, with the one athlete and the uh, three employees uh, testing positive, you put out uh, the latest information on how mm -hmm. y'all are handling right. uh, the, uh, the 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 cases. And, mm -hmm. and before you respond to that, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be uh, sharing Governor Kemp's press conference from yesterday, where uh, he he was on. It's a very good press conference. It'll be coming up at ten o'clock for those of you watching on television. But uh, the Surgeon General was there, and one of the things that he stressed during the uh, one of the questions from one of the reporters. He said it is not a question on whether or not uh, there will be a COVID positive case as we return to school. It's a question on when. He said we've already seen some and what it tells me is that the school system already had things in place to recognize that and a plan was in place and he said th that's going to be it because there mm -hmm. is going to be positive cases mm -hmm. as we go forward. That is so true. That is a very wise observation about the condition that we all find ourselves in today and going forward for a while. Um, what we're doing is we are collaborating. Uh, we believe um, that better decisions are made when we seek the counsel of others who are experts. So um, everything that we are doing um, with our planning is validated through CDC, the Department of Public Health, the Georgia Department of Ed, um, and our local health department. Um, so that's how we're working. So yesterday morning, um, we, um, I decided to go ahead and put in writing, we had heard that there were going to be some more guidelines coming forth uh, at, from the state level. And I think um, maybe we're not going to be getting that. Um, and so I just went ahead with what we have so far and tried to condense it into um, four steps um, there about how we're handling students or personnel who test positive for COVID-19. Do you want me to go over that? Absolutely, yes. Go right ahead. Okay, and then what I did, I called Dr. Gary Vocio, who is the um, lead doctor at the Dade County Health Department, actually for the whole region, you know, in northwest Georgia. And I said, Dr. Vocio, uh, if I send you a draft of this, would you bless it for me? And he said, I'd be glad to. So he read it, and um, because I'm not a medical doctor, and the principals, uh, neither the principals nor I want to be perceived uh, as making medical declarations. And uh, we do have nurses at each school now. The board has hired two additional nurses, but they are working in concert with the Dade County um, Health Department. So the first thing I did was define what does it mean to be exposed? You know, you hear a lot in these guidelines about, oh, if you're exposed, then such and such. So um, number one is just a definition of what it means to be exposed. And Evan, it means that you are closer than six feet to someone who tests positive for more than 15 minutes without a mask. So again, the definition of being exposed is being closer than six feet 
without a mask for more than 15 minutes. So that helps you a lot to understand the context for the next three statements. So for example, if you're in a classroom setting and a student in the first seat in the right corner of the room test positive, the student who's in the back corner of the room did not get exposed just because you're in that room. So I've had that question a lot. If a student tests positive, will the whole class have to be quarantined? Um, only if the student was exposed. That means closer than six feet for more than 15 minutes without a mask. Now, if you were exposed, number two says that if you were exposed to someone who did test positive for COVID-19, then Dr. Vocio says you have to quarantine for 14 days and you should be tested for the virus on the 10th day because sometimes it takes that long for the virus to reveal itself. So if you were exposed, you have to quarantine for 14 days and be tested on the 10th day. Now number three is what if you get a positive result on the test? Well, the guidelines state that you have to isolate at home for a minimum of 10 days and 24 hours without symptoms and fever free without fever reducing medications. So what does that mean? Let's say that um, a person is exposed to a, another person who tests positive and they have to quarantine for 14 days. Well, on the 10th day, they go and get tested. They get the test result back and it's positive. Well, they have to isolate for another 10 days and they cannot come back to work or to school until they are 24 hours without fever. And you remember the, the guideline, Evan, for fever, the degrees? It's 100.4. Um, if, if you are 100.4 or greater, we have to send you home. So you can't have fever and you can't be coughing or you know, having respiratory problems. You have to be symptom free and fever free for 24 hours. That just recently was changed. Previously, the CDC and DPH guidelines had 72 hours, but they've changed it to 24. And then the last thing, number four, is just um, that Dr. Vocio reminds us to be vigilant about hand washing, just plain old soap and water, folks. I mean, there's been so much out there about hand sanitizer. Um, we've checked all of our hand sanitizers, and we have hand sanitizer in all of our schools, all of our facilities, to make sure that they're safe. But just plain old soap and water will do the trick social distancing and wearing a face mask and or shield. So basically, um, Evan, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep a distance of six feet. And that means I'm not having cozy lunches with all the people I love that I work with. I'm not sitting across the table chatting. You know, I'm staying six feet away and I'm wearing a mask if I'm in a group setting and um, I'm hand washing and being ca you know, cautious about touching my face, my eyes or whatever. And the last thing on here is just um, if you have any question like who's the point of contact, the principal is the point of contact for the school just like always. Parents can talk to the nurse. The nurse the principal and the superintendent will be making um, decisions in concert with the Department of Public Health. And so that's how we're doing it. And like in the bus barn, that would be Brother John um, Smith. Um, par parents can talk to John Smith if they have a question about the bus. So that's kind of it. That's a lot. Well, uh, and, and we've got a news break coming up. And, of course, I want you to stay with us after the uh, news break. We'll continue to talk about Thursday with the uh, return of the students. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, I want to ask you, uh, with the uh, employees, because I've had a number of people ask, mm -hmm. 
how are they doing? Are they symptomatic, asymptomatic? And they're just uh, a few people wanted to check and see how they were doing. Oh, thanks. We really appreciate that. And um, they're all doing well. They're at home. No one is in the hospital. So we thank God for that. Um, and our student, I think, is doing fine as well. I haven't checked today on um, the four of them. But I think everyone's doing well. And um, we are doing our own contact tracing um, after a positive is revealed. And um, thank you for asking. Yeah, because uh, mm -hmm. we, we hand had some uh, people ask about that. And, and just before we go to the break, mm -hmm. I will tell you the latest county by county, because they're doing it on a two-week notice, or mm -hmm. two-week basis now. Uh, as of last Friday, we were up to like 33, 34 cases in two weeks. Uh, as of today, we're down to 30. That's good. Uh, that's, uh, so it's uh, it's down uh, basically 10%, if you will, um, since last Friday. Uh, we've still only had seven folks that have a Dade County address that has been hospitalized through the entire process. We picked up one person that's hospitalized. We, of course, because of the uh, HIPAA laws, we don't know who mm -hmm. they are. They don't. We don't. All we know is they've got a Dade County address. Right. So we've had a total of seven that's been hospitalized, which is great. And of course, only uh, as far as the official total, we've only had one death since this have all started uh, mm -hmm. way back in uh, March, as far as the uh, data collection. So, Dr. Harris, if you will stay with us, we're going to take a news break coming up here on KWN, and we invite you to. Uh, for those of you listening and watching, stay with us. We're going to talk with Dr. Harris a lot more about what's going on with the reopening of Dade County Schools, all coming up on KWIN today.
Back now to uh, Kim Wynn today visiting uh, with uh, Dr. Jan Harris, who is the uh, school superintendent for Dade County as they prepare to get open, uh, talking about various things that are uh, that are happening in preparation of the opening. Uh, I guess we are now within 48 hours of kids returning to the campus. Uh, and of course, we mm -hmm. might add there's been a lot of uh, students already in, in athletics that are already there, uh, band athletics mm -hmm. and different things that are happening. But as far as the uh, return to school happens on Thursday. That must be why my phone is blowing up over here. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a lot of text and emails and... There's a lot of excitement in the schools, just I like normal. I would keep that battery charger <laughs> handy, because I believe in the next month or so, you may have to replace that phone. I know. I know, Evan. You're probably right. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk through a typical uh, restart. We now know how you're going to handle positive uh, tests, whether it be a student or whether it be a, uh, uh, a faculty member. But what is a typical, typical day starting, I'm getting up in the morning, I'm heading out to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. What? Let's, let's walk through that and uh, tell us what we can mm -hmm. expect. Well, we're asking our parents to, first of all, take um, their children's temperature before they leave in the morning. You know, um, it takes all of us working together to be successful. Um, many hands make light work. You know, the acronym um, TEAM stands for Together Everyone Achieves More. If parents will take um, the temperature of their uh, children before they ever leave in the morning, that will help us so much. And if a child um, has a temperature or an, an adult of 100.4 or higher, then that child needs to stay home. So that would be the first thing that I would say. And then um, when the children go to the bus stop, if they ride the bus, they'll be um, required to wear a mask on the bus because it's not feasible to expect social distancing on the bus. Um, Brother John, um, you know, we call John Smith Brother John because he's a former pastor, and that's his, his nickname. That's just for what us. we've always called him. <laughs> yes. so we're not going to change it now. <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, he, um, he and the bus drivers have been working so hard to um, create schedules and bus routes where they're um, putting family groups together. And previously, we had tried to not mix like elementary children with secondary children, but now we're going back to a family model where we can. And students will have assigned seats and they will be separated where possible, but they will be required to wear a mask. So if you don't want your child to wear a mask, you can carpool with another family or take your child to school and that's just fine. Um, when they get to school, um, the elementary students will have, they'll go to um, their classrooms in the morning. That's different. They'll go directly to their classrooms and we are um, adopting the cohort model where the students are kept in small groups in the classroom. And um, we try to avoid these large gatherings. So this, the elementary children will go to the classroom and we will serve breakfast to all of our children um, at no cost. We have worked out a plan um, to do that. Um, so we'll see how that goes for the first semester and, and work that out. But um, we will have breakfast in the classroom. And speaking of breakfast, um, I want to put a plug in to everybody listening. Um, if you think you might be eligible for free and reduced lunch, please complete the paperwork. That is completely confidential. I don't even see that, um, Evan. That Dr. Long um, handles that and the lunchroom and that that is like going to the doctor. Uh, you know, your medical records are private, protected by law, and no one sees that. And I know that sometimes people are hesitant to fill out that paperwork, but we make it as simple as possible. 
Um, you can do that online or you can call the Dade County Board of Ed and talk to Jennifer Bowden or Dr. Long um, or any of the principals and we will help you get that paperwork completed. And again, that is private information. Um, and then back to what a typical day will look like. Um, again, we're going to try to minimize the class changes, the transitions. And um, at the secondary level, the students will be, you know, changing classes, but we're going to um, strongly encourage them to wear masks. Um, we're strongly encouraging masks all day long. They're not required, but they're strongly encouraged. And in the hallways, we are requiring the mask. Um, if a student says, well, I don't want to wear a mask, well, then we're going to let that student wait until everyone passes in the hall with the mask on, and then those students, we're going to work it out. Um, and then the lunches, you'll see more lunch periods, um, smaller groups. The classrooms will be um, fewer chairs. We have 18% of our students who have enrolled in our virtual school. So that's almost 400 students, Evan. So we'll and, have, and that's K through 12. Right. That, that's right. And we will have fewer students in our building, which will help us to social distance. So um, that will be different. We won't be having big assemblies, um, mass, open house gatherings, um, which, by the way, you might find this interesting. Um, everybody loved having open house by appointment. In the elementary schools, we did that by appointment, and I'm only hearing positive feedback about that because I think previously people were vying for attention. And well, that makes sense. I mean, you do parent teaching conferences like that, right? So that's probably so, something very easy for the teacher to transition into. Right. Previously, there might be three or four parents and students standing around with a teacher, and so they got individualized attention, and I think everybody liked it. Um, we missed having all of our um, seventh and eighth graders and then the upperclassmen at the high school come for open house. We just did the new students and then um, sixth grade and ninth grade, but um, that worked out really well. So we won't be having big assemblies like you would have seen previously where we had, oh, we're having an assembly to go over the rules. We won't be doing that. Well, uh, we fall back to the uh, the uh, morning announcements that I can remember real well where they would come across the, uh, the intercom. Everybody sitting in their desk and listening right. to the uh, principal give all the information of the day. So I guess, mm -hmm. I guess we're back to that again, which well, is great, I think. We're a little bit more modern than that. We have a uh, television station at all of our schools. We added the elementary schools last year. We've had a TV station at the middle and high school. And last year, um, Josh Hurst and Will Martin helped get Davis and Dade Elementary set up. So they do the morning announcements video um, time each day. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, a parent in home, and I do want to stress this. You were talking about your phone going off mm -hmm. there. Um, the Surgeon General, in the press conference that we're, and I'm going to go ahead and air it on radio. So if you're listening mm -hmm. on radio or television, we're going to go right into this. I think it's very important for you to hear the governor uh, uh, and also very important for you to hear the questions and answers coming from the reporters through the, uh, the uh, Surgeon General. Uh, you know, and he he said it's not if, it's when, and it's how we uh, follow the guidelines that have been set already in place. And one of the things the governor did say, he said, all of these have been, all of the authority has been given to the local school board that can best make the decision for their local community. He he, he talked about that, and that'll be coming up, but. Uh, you know, I'm just getting information. This is in Hamilton County. Three more students that were, uh, you know, testing positive. Parents from from the Surgeon General, he says it's not if, it is mm -hmm. when, but it's how the school systems deal with that is really how it's going to play out. And uh, I think you've already seen the uh, 
uh, well, you've already seen it here, where you're mm-hmm. getting uh, 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 already positive tests from the faculty and for the students. And I think if anybody's listening out there and realizing that, you know, uh, we're going to be able to keep everybody from getting it, that was never really what the whole thing was about. It was about slowing the spread down. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can just imagine you're getting all kinds of information, but, you know, the news media is going to put out every time there's a case, it's going to go out, mm-hmm. and, and rightfully so. But I, th- I think for those of you listening out there, need to make sure when you hear this information, you put it in perspective. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll let you go ahead. We, Doctor, we got about three or four minutes here. Uh, you can add anything that you'd like. Well, I was just going to say, you know, our parents um, and our citizens in our community, they're smart. And um, they have been so supportive. I have the greatest respect for our parents and our community members. Um, we've had several who have written us notes or called and just left a message and said, we're praying for y'all. Um, y'all are doing a great job. Um, our schools look good. Thanks for the information. And um, we want, I want to invite everyone to pray for our Dade County Schools as we open um, to protect our staff and our students, keep us healthy and strong so that we all can try to get back to normal where people can go to work and children can learn. And, um, you know, we want to focus on staying healthy. And um, yesterday at um, our principals meeting, I said, Maslow is greater than Bloom. And um, two of the models that we use for teaching is, um, you know, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Well the foundational need for all of us is safety you know to have a house and to have food and to be you know taken care of to be healthy and then um bloom's tax taxonomy uh for learning is like there's different levels of learning and we always want to go to the top of the um taxonomy to the um, level where students are learning, they're analyzing, they're synthesizing information, they're creating projects. Well, Maslow is more important than Bloom right now, and that's what I told the principals. You know, our basic safety needs trump the hierarchy of learning, if you will. And children need to be back in school. The American um, Academy of Pediatrics, you know, they have come out and said that children need to be back in school. Um, The risk of them being home and being isolated is greater than um, the physical risk of being in school, according to the pediatricians group. And um, we're looking forward to getting our children back in school. Um, They need to be having that social interaction. And school is a happy place, Evan. We have beautiful, clean environments. We have delicious, healthy food. We have beautiful, smiling faces to greet our children every morning on the bus and in the hallway and in the classroom and in the lunchroom. And so um, I love school. I've never even considered my job as a job I consider it going to school I'm going to school I love school and our children love school they want to be in school most of them um, want to be back in that routine so that's what we're praying for and we appreciate everybody's support and I promise um, everyone that I will share everything that I legally can with them and uh, when we have a positive report it's like you said Evan it's not if it's when and um, we're going to have cases Uh, the more that we interact with each other the more we're going to see cases and um, I don't know about you Evan but I'm trying to ramp up you know my own personal um, you know taking care of myself like trying to be healthy getting enough rest eating right, getting some exercise, Uh, I'm taking a vitamin. Um, I think we all can help ourselves a little bit, you know, with 
the old-fashioned way, just going to bed early and um, getting enough sleep. And I'm trying to be healthy, and I know that um, you can't always control that. But anyway, you can do your part. Absolutely. Dr. Mm -hmm. Jan Harris, State County School Superintendent. Doctor, thank you for mm -hmm. coming on. We've got a, uh, a big day coming up on Thursday as um, uh, over 80% uh, of 84, I believe, mm -hmm. who will be returning to in-class learning this coming uh, Thursday. Jackson County, I may add, have, have already... Uh, returned to school last Friday, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, Jackson, or excuse me, DeKalb County is uh, starting tomorrow with a staggered, depending on your last mm -hmm. name, your alphabet uh, way to bring everybody back safely all this week. So by the time we uh, get to next Monday, uh, three out of the four counties that we cover as far mm -hmm. as the television is concerned, Marion, Jackson, DeKalb, and Dade. Now Marion has decided not to go back until uh, the day after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, both the uh, Alabama schools and Jackson and DeKalb back in session as of tomorrow. Dade County back in session as of Thursday. And, uh, of course, we will continue to do our part here, getting the information out when there's positive cases, what type of uh, decisions you've made at the leadership uh, level as far as uh, postponements, delays, um, or, or anything of that nature. We'll let, you, uh, we'll let everyone know here. Well, we appreciate you, Evan. You're a great supporter and partner in communicating with our parents. So thank you so much. Well, I, I do want those of you to uh, stay and listen. I've decided that we're going to stay uh, on radio and, and do the press conference that was held yesterday by uh, Georgia uh, Governor Brian Kemp along with the uh, Surgeon General of the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that now. But, Dr. Harris, we thank you very much for being here on the uh, on KWIN today. Thank you. WKWN Trenton, top of the hour, and let's go now to that uh, press conference with uh, Governor Brian Thank you for Kemp. watching live and local KWN-TV.